Have you been eating these foods wrong all your life? We're about to plunge into a culinary journey that will have you questioning your eating habits. Today, we're serving up a feast of knowledge about the top 10 foods you've probably been eating wrong. We'll be diving into the delectable world of sushi, unraveling the mysteries of pasta, and taking a slice out of the pizza debate. We'll crack open the secrets of enjoying lobster, peel back the layers of artichokes and wing it with chicken wings. We'll sweeten the deal with cupcakes, seed your curiosity with pomegranates and finally, shuck and jive with oysters. Each food comes with its own set of rules, traditions and quirks that you may not be aware of. So prepare to have your food world rocked, your taste buds tantalized and your kitchen skills upgraded. Stay tuned to find out if you've been eating these foods right or wrong. First up, let's talk about sushi. This elegant Japanese delicacy has taken the culinary world by storm, but are we enjoying it the way it's meant to be savored? One common mistake many of us make is dunking the rice part of the sushi into the soy sauce. This not only makes the sushi fall apart but also overwhelms the delicate balance of flavors. The proper way to enjoy sushi is by dipping the fish side lightly into the soy sauce. This allows the soy sauce to enhance the fish's flavor without overpowering it. Additionally, it's best to consume sushi in one bite to appreciate the harmonious blend of rice, fish, and other accompaniments. And remember, wasabi and ginger aren't meant to be piled on top. They're palate cleansers to be enjoyed between different types of sushi. So next time remember, no dunking the rice. Pasta. We all love it, but are you eating it the right way? Now, whether it's spaghetti, fettuccine, or linguine, the technique remains the same. First off, let's debunk a common myth. Cutting your pasta with a knife is a big no-no. Yes, you heard it right. The authentic Italian way is to leave the knife out of this. Now let's talk about the right way. The real secret lies in the twirl. Yes, the twirl. You need to use your fork and spoon together. Place your fork into the pasta, then use the spoon to assist in twirling it around the fork. This method might seem a bit tricky at first, but trust me, once you get the hang of it, you'll enjoy your pasta even more. So the next time you sit down with a plate of pasta, remember, no knife, just twirl. And that's how you eat pasta the right way. Remember, twirling is key. Pizza, a global favorite, but are you eating it the right way? Let's dive into this delicious controversy. There's a long-standing debate over the proper way to eat a slice of pizza. Some say with a knife and fork, others say with your hands, but have you ever considered the fold method? Hailing from the bustling streets of New York, the fold method is quite a game-changer. The idea is simple, you just fold your slice in half lengthways. This creates a sort of pizza sandwich, making it easier to handle and less likely for toppings to take a dive onto your shirt. This method also keeps the deliciously gooey cheese and toppings safely tucked inside, ensuring every bite is a burst of flavor. But of course, the choice is yours. There's no right or wrong when it comes to enjoying your favorite meal. So, to fold or not to fold, that's the question. Let's move on to a delicacy, the lobster. This ocean gem is often seen as a symbol of luxury, but the way most people eat it isn't exactly elegant. The common mistake? Relying solely on that little lobster fork and missing out on the best parts. First, don't be shy about using your hands. Lobster is a hands-on food. Crack those claws open, and don't forget about the knuckles. They hold some of the sweetest meat. Next, the tail. Many people discard the flippers at the end, but they contain delicious morsels worth seeking out. And the green stuff in the body? That's the tomale. It's a delicacy to some, an acquired taste to others, but it's definitely edible and packed with flavor. So when it comes to lobster, remember, there's more than meets the eye, and the most delicious parts may require some digging. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Artichokes, delicious but tricky to eat. Now isn't that the truth? These thistle-like vegetables are a treat, yet their assembly often leaves us confounded. So you've been there, huh? Puzzled by the spiky exterior and unsure where to start? Well here's the lowdown. Start by removing the tougher outer leaves. The heart of the artichoke, that's the prize, but don't rush. The journey is just as enjoyable as the destination. Pull off each leaf, dip it in your favorite sauce, maybe a tangy aioli or a zesty vinaigrette, and drag it between your teeth to scrape off the tender flesh. As you venture inward, the leaves become thinner, softer. When you finally reach the heart, after carefully removing the fuzzy choke, you're rewarded with the most succulent part. Slice it, dip it, savor it. Remember, patience is key with artichokes. They're a culinary adventure, not a race. So, take your time and enjoy the journey. Chicken wings, a party favorite. But are you eating them correctly? Let's dive into this finger-licking treat. Many of us just gnaw around the bone, but there's a way to get all the meat off in one fell swoop. It's a technique known as the bone-twisting method. Here's the deal. 
Hold the wing on both ends. Find the smaller bone, that's the radius, give it a gentle twist. You should be able to pull it out cleanly, leaving you with just the larger bone, the ulna, and of course all the delicious meat. Now do the same with the ulna, twist, pull, and voila. You've got an all-meat wing ready to be dipped into your favorite sauce and devoured. The bone twisting method might be a little messy, but hey, eating wings is a hands-on experience. So next time you're at a wing night, remember, twist and pull for the perfect bite. Sweet tooth alert, let's talk about cupcakes. These mini delights are universally loved, but have you ever wondered if there's a better way to eat them? Well, there is. It's called the sandwich method. Here's how it works. First, twist off the bottom half of the cupcake. Easy, right? Now place it on top of the frosting. Voila! You've made a cupcake sandwich. This method ensures a perfect cake to frosting ratio in every bite. No more saving the best for the last and no more frosting on your nose. This brilliant hack also helps to keep the frosting from smearing all over your face. Plus it can make the cupcake a little less messy to eat, especially if you're on the go. It's a simple yet game-changing way to enjoy your favorite sweet treat. So next time you're faced with a cupcake, remember the sandwich method. So turn your next cupcake into a sandwich. Pomegranates, a superfood that's tricky to eat. These ruby-like seeds, or arils, are packed with antioxidants and vitamins, but getting to them can often be a messy endeavor. Most of us have probably been guilty of tearing into them and ending up with a red juice crime scene. But there's a better way. The score and open method is your mess-free ticket to enjoying this delicious fruit. Start by cutting off the crown of the pomegranate, then lightly score the skin in quarters from top to bottom, careful not to cut too deep. Next, hold the pomegranate underwater in a bowl and break it apart along the score lines. The arrows will sink to the bottom while the pith floats to the top. Drain the water and voila, you've got a bowl full of nutritious and tasty pomegranate seeds ready to be enjoyed without the crime scene. So score and open for a mess-free pomegranate experience, Oysters, a delicacy that's often eaten incorrectly. Now if you've been chewing your oysters we have some news for you. The proper way to enjoy this seafood gem is actually to slurp it. Yes you heard it right, like a kid with a bowl of soup. Here's the scoop. When served on a half shell, oysters come with their own natural brine. This flavorful liquid holds the essence of the sea and is a crucial part of the oyster eating experience. To get started you first loosen the oyster from its shell with a fork. Then lift the shell to your lips. Tilt your head back slightly, and slurp the oyster along with its brine. This method allows you to fully appreciate the unique taste and texture of the oyster. You can add a squeeze of lemon or a dash of hot sauce if you like, but remember to keep the condiments light to not overpower the delicate flavor of the oyster. Remember, slurp don't chew. So, those were the top 10 foods you might have been eating wrong. Let's take a quick culinary stroll down memory lane, shall we? We started off with sushi. Yes, the delicate, flavorful Japanese delight. We learned that chopsticks aren't always the way to go, and that dipping the rice into the soy sauce is a big no-no. A gentle flip and a dip of the fish side is all it takes. Then pasta. Who knew that twirling it on a spoon isn't really the Italian way? We discovered that a simple fork twist technique is the way to savor your spaghetti. Next up was pizza. The New York fold is not just for show folks. It actually helps to balance out the crust and toppings for a perfect bite each time. Who could forget the lobster? A delicacy for sure, but the cracking and extracting ordeal was simplified. Remember the best bits aren't just in the tail and claws. Artichokes came next. We discovered that these leafy treats are not as intimidating as they seem. You've got to pull, dip and scrape to enjoy this veggie. And the chicken wings? Well, the twist and pull method surely surprised some of us, didn't it? No more messy fingers and unseemly bites. Cupcakes made us rethink our dessert strategy. The sandwich method we discussed, now that's a game changer. Pomegranates had us questioning our patience, but the cut and tap technique we shared is going to save you a lot of time, and your clothes from those stubborn stains. Finally, oysters. We learned that there's more to these sea gems than just slurping. A little wiggle and a thoughtful chew can elevate your oyster experience. Now go forth and eat correctly. Remember food is not just about taste, it's also about experience. 